Good day, everyone. I pray again that you know the love and grace of the Father today. Then everything you do, that he is there with you and for you. All because of one simple word, a four-letter word, because he loves you. It's because of the love of God that you and I exist, that we enjoy everything that the Father has given us. We enjoy his presence. We enjoy his blessings. We enjoy his leading. We enjoy his discipline. We enjoy the fact that we are loved by the Father. In fact, we've been looking at the book of 1 John, the letter of 1 John. And if you take 1 John, 2 John, 3 John all together, you'll see that John uses that word love almost 40 times between three letters. In his first letter, he uses it 26 times. In that 26 times, he tells us two things. One, how much God loves us. And then two, how we should be loving our brothers and sisters. Because love is not something that we just consume. We receive it. But in receiving it, we give it away. <clears throat> it is hard to say, I love you, without giving it away. Because love is not something that just comes into us and we keep it. It is something that we receive and then pass on because it is, becomes our lifestyle of love because the Father has loved us. And the Father keeps loving us so that we then love our brothers. And so John almost divides this in half in terms of how much God loves us. And so for the next few days, we're going to look at the themes that John gives us. And basically, a theme for John is something that he repeats constantly. Because remember, repetition is the Bible's way of saying, pay attention. This is what you need to see and know. So here's how much the Father loves us. <clears throat> he says, see how great the love the Father has bestowed upon us. One, that we should be called the children of God. And that's what we are. Then he says, we know that you and I, have passed from light, from death into life because we love the brethren, because of the love of God in us. We know, love by this, that God laid down his life, sent his son, that he lays down his life for us. He says, beloved, we should love one another because everyone who loves is born of God and God lives in him because, are you ready for this? The source of love is God. And everyone who is born of God knows God because of God's love. The one who does not love does not know God. It's that simple. Why? Because of the love of God in us, because the opposite of love often is hate, but sometimes it's more than just hate. It's the whole idea of ignoring the people around you. One of the things I've learned to do in my life <clears throat> as I live and walk around the streets of San Francisco, wherever I am, is to acknowledge the homeless, what we would call the invisibles, people that we don't want to be bothered with, we don't want to see. Why? Yes, we may not be able to give them anything, but we can acknowledge their existence. <clears throat> because in acknowledging their existence, what we're really doing is saying, God loves you, and I see you. Because all of us, want to be seen. All of us want to be known. And so what we do is that we love, we acknowledge the people around us. We give them the basic love of God and understanding their existence. John goes on. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. By this, the love of God was manifested in us. In this love, not that we loved God, but he loved us. That God has loved you so much that even before you knew him, he loved you and wanted you to know that he has loved you. He goes on. We have come to know and have believed the love which God has for us. Here's God's nature. God is love. And the one who abides in love abides in God and God abides in him. We're going to deal with abide in a few days. But understand what he's saying. When we live and remain in God's love, God's love abides in us because we are in him. Peter again helps us here. I love this verse so much. I bring it up often. That we are partakers of the divine nature 
because of what God has done in us. John goes on. And says, this is God loving us. By this, love is perfected in us so that we have confidence in the day of judgment. That when Jesus comes and when we stand before the throne of God in judgment, for what God's when God asks us that question, what did you do with the life of Christ I gave you? We stand there with confidence because of the love that we have for him and that he has for us. We love because he has first loved us. Now, that's God loving us. The source of love, God is love. <clears throat> the nature of God, God is love. But then, John turns. He's still talking about love. But what he's saying next is how we love, what it is we should do. He says this, anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God. The one who does not love his brother is practicing righteousness. For well, this is the message we have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Again, but whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in need and closes his heart against him, how does the love of God abide in him? Little children, let us not love with word or tongue, but with deed and truth. As I said at the beginning, love is some, not something we just get and consume. Love is something we give away. Love is something that the Father speaks into us. We receive it. it. It begins to become part of our attitude, part of how we live our lives. And in living our lives that way, excuse me, we love each other. We give to each other. Yes, when we have things, we share them. We give them because we know that the love of the Father is in us. John goes on. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. Why? Because love is an action verb. It is the idea of giving what God has given you. And it's just an issue of sharing. We typically think of giving. Here, take this. No. The idea of love is love is a relationship that we walk with in the Father. And that the Father speaks into us. Why? Because we don't want to be liars. Think of that person in your life. That, you, that just bothers you to no end. There's someone who needs the love of Christ. And guess who gets to show them the love of Christ? You. Because, yes, you're annoyed, you're frustrated, all of the things that go on there. But the Father says, love them. Why? Because if you say you love God, and the love of God is in you, and you hate your brother, then you're a liar. You're also in sin. And then he says this, and this commandment we have from him, that the one who loves God should love his brother also. By this, we know the love. By this, we know that we love the children of God when we observe his commandments. Yes, love is hard. And sometimes you have to love with tough love. And tough love is saying that's not what you should be doing. Tough love is holding people accountable. Tough love is speaking love to them in ways that they understand, know, and receive it. Because you and I have received this love from the Father in relationship. As the Father speaks his love into us, we get to speak that into the hearts and minds of those around us. And John, in this wonderful letter, gives us the balance of these two. We love because God has first loved us. We walk in relationship with him and give away the love that he's given us because God is love. Therefore, we love our brothers. We love those around us. We give what God has given us because you and I are loved of God. What does he say at the beginning here? He says, oh, what great love the Father has given each of us that we should be called and are the children of God. Therefore, we love like the Father, unconditionally. We give away what the Father has given us so wonderfully, so freely. Jesus, help us to be lovers like you, to love those around us. Thank you for loving us, that we have the privilege 
of sharing the love that you have given us. Forgive us for those times when we have been unloving, uncaring. Forgive us and help us to love because you have first loved us. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Be blessed today, my dear friends.